Wembley Stadium in London, England, AEW presents All In Zero Hour. AEW fans around the globe, we've descended upon London, and tonight we will fill Wembley Stadium with over 80,000 loud and rowdy fans that are just as excited as we are to have AEW in the United Kingdom. Tonight is an historic night for professional wrestling and a monumental evening for all elite wrestling. And we are all here because we love professional wrestling. It has brought us all together here tonight. Now, to quote Wyndham Rotunda, wrestling is not a love story. It's a fairy tale for masochists, a comedy for people who criticize the punchlines, a fantasy that most people can't understand, and a spectacle no one can deny. We are all here for our love of professional wrestling, witnessing history here tonight for All Elite Wrestling. I am so happy to be here as your host for Zero Hour AEW All in London. I'm Renee Paquette. Joining me today, he's a 2012 Olympic medal winning boxer, a star of AEW, Anthony Agogo. Thank you for having me, Renee. We're here in London, my hometown. Wembley Stadium, the home of football, also tonight, the home of AEW. Yes, it is. Also hailing from right here in the United Kingdom, the ever-charming Kip Sabian. <laughs> Wembley. Wembley Stadium. I did speak to you about this earlier. Yeah. Earlier, my dad always wanted me to come into this stadium in an England jersey, or shirt as we would call it in the UK. <laughs> And I did. I walked in through the gates earlier in my England shirt. It's a little bit different than my dad was expecting, but I, <laughs> Dad, I did it. You did it. I did, did it, Dad. You, you, did it. you manifested that dream. <laughs> also yeah. joining us here today, the best big man in the business, my captain, Paul White. I, I am your captain. I thought you were going to say Kip Sabian for a second there. Nah, I can't do that to you, Paul. You can't say that? No, give, Kip? You, uh, give, the, give the pop. Paul, yeah. you've <laughs> been a part of a lot of monumental nights in professional wrestling. How does tonight stack up? Tonight, like I said, I've said before doing some of the media tours over here, tonight is a moment in history. In professional wrestling, there are certain moments that history never forgets. All Elite, Wembley, over 80,000 tickets sold. This is a moment in time and a moment in history. And we don't want anyone to miss it, so this is how you guys can watch tonight. You can call your cable or satellite providers, Dave and Busters and live select locations, Tom's Watch Bar, live and select locations, and Fight the Zone skyppv.com and youtube.com available in select international markets. You do not want to miss tonight. We have such an incredible night ahead of us. We are making history. Let's get into it right here on the Zero Hour. Uh, opening the show here at Wembley, the Ring of Honor World Tag Titles are on the line. It's Aussie Open putting their gold on the line against the better than you, babies, Adam Cole and MJF. The FTW title is up for grabs as Jungle Boy Jack Perry takes on Hook. That's action kicking off here on the Zero Hour. Then live on the all-in pay-per-view, our main event. It's the AEW World Champion MJF battling his best friend Adam Cole. Their second round of action for the evening. The AEW World Tag Team titles are on the line in a rubber match. It's FTR versus the Young Bucks. We can all rejoice. The real world champion CM Punk takes on Samoa Joe in a rivalry that has spanned the better part of two decades. And tonight, the powerhouses collide. The master of reinvention, the Ocho, Chris Jericho takes on one of the current best professional wrestlers in the world and soon to be free agent, Will Ospreay. Trio's action, the golden elite Ibushi Omega and Hangman will go toe to toe with Takeshita and Bullet Club Gold, Jay White and Juice Robinson. It's a four way matchup for the AEW Women's Championship. Current champ Hikaru Shida puts her gold up for grabs on the big stage against Tony Storm, Britt Baker, and the UK's own Soraya. The AEW World Trio's titles, we're going to see the champs House of Black take on the acclaimed and badass Billy Gunn. The stadium stampede couldn't have a better backdrop for this historic Wembley Stadium. It's a Blackpool Combat Club with Santana and Ortiz taking on the best friends, Orange Cassidy, Eddie Kingston, and Penta. And it's a coffin match for Darby Allen and Sting versus Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage. 
What an unbelievable night we have ahead of us. I mean, rattling off all those incredible matches we're going to see here tonight. You can feel the electricity already. Electricity, energy. This place is going to be rumbling. I Spicy. can't wait for our AEW talent to feel what 80,000 people screaming down your necks going to feel like. <laughs> well, it is not just us four here breaking down all the action ahead of tonight's AEW All In. Also joining us tonight, RJ City. Thank you, Renee, and hello, you crazy kids. I am inside the Royal Box here at Wembley Stadium. Come with me just a minute. I'll have a lime Ricky, please. Wembley Stadium was constructed 100 years ago and then constructed again in 2007, but we don't need to talk about that. It's been home to two Olympic Games, countless FA Cups, one of the international homes of the NFL. The Jacksonville Jaguars are going to play here soon. Who could forget this moment? Of course, Live Aid, Freddie Mercury, Pavarotti, Simon and Garfunkel, and of course, Evil Knievel's first retirement in 1975 when he tried to jump 13 buses. But get a shot inside this building. Look at this thing. The circumference of this whole stadium is one kilometer. The arch above my head is 463 feet in the air, and there are over 2,600 bathrooms in this building. I might need one soon because I'm going to soil myself with excitement. Oh Renee, my wow. RJ, back to you. I mean, too much. Come on, who gives this guy a live mic? This is insane. <laughs> I love it. Soil much. Just too much. Too much. Too I love much. it. Rattling off all of the facts, though. I mean, we now we know a little more about Wembley Stadium. All right, guys, let's get in to the action tonight. Soon to be free agent, Will Ospreay, arguably one of the best wrestlers today. He's battling one of the greatest of all time, the master of reinvention, the king of the big stage, the Ocho, it's Chris Jericho. And after what happened last week, maybe I should change a few things. So Don, my answer, if I want to be a part of the Don Callis family, is yes! Yes! Let's go drink Broadway dry and beat up some rednecks, just like back in the day, come on. What's with the picture there? If it's a gift for me, John, I want to see it. I do want to celebrate, and I want to celebrate with this picture with me all night long. Well, he's got some explaining to do here, doesn't he? You are 34 years of friendship be damned. Oh, Konosuke Takeshita was coming in with a steel chair. What, what, what was that? What? Will Ospreay! Don Callis calling in reinforcement. Ospreay! Golden Will Ospreay test. Out of nowhere! Why do you have your sights set on Chris Jericho? Oh, my, my sights set on Jericho. You have a laugh. Gosh, the resume of both of these men. Uh, this is a match that's make or break for Will Ospreay. Mate, when I was a teenager, I was watching Chris Jericho. Help, my dad knows Chris Jericho. My granddad knows Chris Jericho. Do you know what I mean? One could say that because we're wrestling in London and Will Ospreay is from Great Britain, that he would have the advantage. But here's the fact. Chris Jericho is a mega star. Jericho has been a star on a major level much longer than Will Ospreay. 30 years of pro wrestling, and it's not just been 30 years, bits and bobs, bits and bobs, some you can drift off, some you can't, consistently. A man that is known for his reinvention, he's been able to have the grandiose, the cachet, all of those bells and whistles, the things that come with being Chris Jericho. Then you look at somebody like Will Ospreay, who has been deemed the greatest of all time uh, from a very young age. We've seen Will Ospreay compete, not just here in AEW, but around the world. And there are very few athletes ever that have walked this earth quite like Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay is a once in a generation professional wrestler. And in my opinion, he's the best in the world today. You know what I offered him? Your head on a platter at Wembley. After I beat you in wrestling's biggest event, I am going to be the only man to say I've beaten Kenny Omega, Okada, and Chris Jericho in two months. And we can rule the world. This is Wembley. It's the biggest show of my career. Don't tell me this is a vanity project for me. This is bigger than any WrestleMania. This is bigger than any Tokyo Dome. This is bigger than anything. You're coming at this from the bottom. I'm coming at this from the top of the effing mountain with everyone trying to knock me off and every hater in social media damn trying to predict my demise. I know I am the best wrestler in the world. All your championships, all your legacy. I respect it all, mate. 
for I'm better than you. How much pressure is on Will Ospreay coming into this match? We know he's in his hometown crowd. We know he's going to have family ringside. But the fact that he's also going to be a free agent very soon, looking to really cement his name on the back of Chris Jericho, how much pressure is he feeling tonight? Well, he's going to feel pressure, one, because he's stepping in front of 80,000 people here at Wembley. I'm sure he hasn't experienced that before at this level. He's also stepping in with Chris Jericho, who is, without a doubt, the GOAT, one of the greatest of all time. I have no problem saying that. Chris is the GOAT, and Chris is going to push this young man. This young man needs to step up. It's either make it or break it. Is oh, Go ahead, Kip. But here's the thing as well with Will. So Chris is easily one of the greatest of all time. You are correct. Without a doubt. At this current moment in time, there is a big argument that Will Ospreay is the best wrestler in the world currently. I That's think fair. this is a battle of egos more than a battle of... Uh, egos? I think it is. I think it is. I, I think it's talent, too, because you're going to see... That's what I mean. Yeah, very two very talented individuals. you got to give Osprey a little bit of an edge, maybe, because mm -hmm. he's very innovative, very creative in his sure. offense, his style. Let's not forget about the X factor to this match being Don Callis. <laughs> How do you guys see him playing into this match? <laughs> well, he's going to be involved at some point or another. That's that's Don Callis' thing. It's it's kind of like if you you know w take a nice walk outside, your shoes are going to get dirty. Yeah. Don Callis is the dirt that gets on your shoes. Anthony, what do you think? I think Will Ospreay, I think he's the best wrestler in the world right now, but he's going against the best wrestler of all time. That's why when Chris, rest when Chris Jericho says that this is the biggest match of his life, that shows the magnitude of Wembley, the right. magnitude of of, yeah. of of all in. And, well, I, I just can't wait for it. Well, that is still to come here tonight on the pay-per-view. But tonight we've also got a rubber match in this trilogy. This is a battle for legacy and the tag team championships. Tonight we will witness the trilogy between two of the best teams in professional wrestling. It is the Young Bucks taking on FTR. What do I think about FDR? I, I don't like them. About 2016, we really started to make some noise in the tag division. We really started making some waves for ourselves. And until that time, Matt and Nick had been the unquestioned kings of tag team wrestling. Our friend Cody actually came up with the initials on our hit show on YouTube, Being the Elite, FTR. At the time, it meant F the Revival. <laughs> they started this uh, FTR. Uh, the revival and um you know that that's something that's always stuck with me and i i uh, i hold a grudge i i will admit that i hold a grudge and it's 2023 and i can't say that i'll let go of that grudge when? of course when? it made them furious because we were laughing about it and uh, we laughed about it because we knew we were better than them we never had to acknowledge them they they started taking the shots at us because they were finally questioned as the greatest tag team in the world and that's carried over you know we came to AEW almost strictly for that reason, to find out who is the best. Wembley is where we put the bow on our legacy. FTR versus Young Bucks, the biggest tag team match of all time. These stadium shows the different beast. It's scary, it's intimidating, it's so big, you don't realize how big it is until you're in the eye of the storm. At the end of the day, FTR, Dax and Cash will be the absolute best tag team of all time, bar none. And at Wembley, we prove it. Kip, what do you think this is more about? Is this about the legacy of who will go down as the best tag team in history, or is it about the championship gold? My favorite thing about wrestling is when it's personal. I think when wrestling's personal, it's the best. And this is probably <laughs> one of the most personal feuds that we've ever, probably one of the biggest ones in wrestling in general. Well, well there's some history behind this. You know, these guys have bumped heads before, tried to see who's the top dog in the industry. Now they're tied at one apiece. Yep. Tonight's for all the prize, all the packages, all the roses. So, you know, this is the one that whichever team wins is going to come out on top, obviously. Uh, how much mutual respect do you see between these teams? I don't see teams? any. None. <laughs> I see loathing and hate. Oh, well, I, agree. I think they respect each other's talent, for sure. Mm -hmm. as respect Good each call. other's uh, personalities, maybe not. But I think we talk about stars, right? Five-star, six-star, seven-star matches. These two teams got more stars than the bloody universe. Yeah. <laughs> They're both unbelievable teams, and this is one of the ones I cannot wait to see. No, I think that we're all very excited to see FTR, Young Bucks, three part of this. I mean, unbelievable here tonight. But as we are here, Wembley Stadium, the history that is in this building. No better backdrop for a little stadium stampede. It's all going down here tonight. 
Uh, we've got the Blackpool Combat Club, Santana and Ortiz, taking on the best friends, Orange Cassidy, Penta, and Eddie Kingston. It is all about the stadium stampede at Wembley. The bad blood between these three teams has heated up very quickly. Lucha Brothers, best friends, y'all playing with explosives. And this parking lot battle is underway. Orange Cassidy retains, but immediately swarming the champion. Look who's back. All in, boys. In the stadium. Stampede back. What? Oh. oh. A stadium stampede. The most unpredictable match ever. You made the challenge. Ortiz. You reap what you sow. Santana. It all culminates. Y'all ready to walk through the fire? I'm gonna make sure you're scored forever. We live in it. You guys messed up. I mean, how do you break down Stadium Stampede? Would you say that this match type, this stipulation favors any of these teams? This is chaos. This doesn't even favor insurance companies. <laughs> It you certainly know, does not. Because there's going to be a lot of damage everywhere, all over the place, and probably to the individuals involved in this match. Just the chaos and the history between these individuals, Eddie Kingston, John Moxley, mm -hmm. this Claudio is going to be a Eddie, very violent, Lord. intense stampede. Yeah, a brawl. This stadium has seen everything. Champions League finals, World Cup finals, mm -hmm. Africa Cup finals, Freddie Mercury. It's never seen anything like yep. what's going to happen in the stadium stampede. I Kip, agree. you've seen all the stadium stampedes. Can you talk to me about a little bit of what that chaos feels like? Watching these kind of matches uh, gets me a little bit excited in my tummy. Ooh. I get butterflies. Mm, sick me. guy. I feel like with this match, though, <laughs> yeah. the best friends, Orange Cassidy, Eddie, they're, they're always ready for a fight. And I, Clementine is Clementine, but this <laughs> match favors John Moxley. This match okay. favors Yuta. This match favors Claudio. Th Santana. I mean, Ortiz. Look at this, this playground is their match. that these guys have to it's work their with. Match. But what their would, match. They've got it one easy. But what, I would, but what I would say, like the best friends, like, they're nice guys. Well, they're nice guys, but they've got a nasty side. We've and seen it. They got a little yeah, dirt on their shoulder now. This, this match will they bring out nasty, that nasty side. Then you talk Certainly. about pure cruelty, and then you got to go, you know. To the Blackpool Combat Club because those guys are cruel and they enjoy it and they don't care. Oof. They give zero Fs if they hurt you. Guys, Period. the clock is ticking down as we get closer and closer to AEW all in London. We are here breaking down all things as we set the stage here for all in. An unbelievable card ahead of us here tonight. Now, here is a match that is just about so much more than titles and crazy stipulations. This is a match about faction supremacy. It's the Golden Elite taking on the Bullet Club Gold with Jay White and Juice Robinson. Six man tag action. Since I was 10 years old, Uncle Don was always there, ready to coach and guide me. Uncle Don is a guy that stabs you in the head with a screwdriver. Kenny Omega, you all love him, but I know the real Kenny Omega. The real Kenny Omega is a coward and a punk. Kenny and his friends have deceived all of you into believing that the elite is the peak of Bullet Club. We're here to set the record straight. Wembley, you got an ass whooping coming from Bullet Club Gold. Kenny's not friendless because in London, Kenny will have two of his greatest tag team partners of all time, The Hanger and Ibushi. We're gonna show you guys, it's more than about fighting. This is about heart, passion, soul, friendship. The misery that you made me feel, Don, it's coming back too full on you. Me and my family are gonna cut Kenny Omega out of this company for good. Don Callis, you will never win this battle. At All In, Bullet Club Goal! Show that they are a cut above the elite. We are the heart, we are the soul, we are the elite! I feel like when you see a matchup like this and you see the names of the stars that are involved in a match like this, this feels to me like the epitome of what we're doing here with All Elite Wrestling, bringing in all of these names, but they're not just fighting for their legacy. I mean, show what is this about? This is personal. This is a flat-out betrayal from Don Callis to Kenny Omega. It's betrayal at its highest level. Judas, if you will, is Don Callis. Kenny Omega needs redemption.
Don, King Omega wants paybacks. Don Callis is quite the thread here tonight. Well, I mean, Kota Ibushi, to me, is one of the most innovative wrestlers of all time. I've always been a massive fan of Kota Ibushi. Kenny Omega, I feel like in this one, he's going to win it whether he wants to or not. What are you, how are you feeling yeah, about I mean, these, it? Yeah, these guys, they've wrestled all around the world, in mm -hmm. Asia, Japan, America. Now it's come to London, and there's not a better stadium in the world that's going to house this, this fight. And it's going to be a fight. It's not a wrestling match. This is going to be a fight. It is going to be a fight. Now, if you were to pick a winner of this fight, who are <sighs> going with? I like to sit firmly on the fence. I like... <laughs> I like sprinters. I like Rene, sprinters. He's young. In my he's new in the company. Don't Tell make him make a statement who like do you that. Like? I'm going with Kenny Omega all the way, hands down. Okay. A betrayal that personal against Don Callis, you are not gonna leave you're not gonna stop till your last breath is given to succeed. And I see that determination in Kenny Omega. Certainly Kenny all the hard way. Hard to bet against Kenny. Kip, what do you think? I I said it before and I'll say it again. I feel like Hangman, Kenny, Ibushi, they're gonna win this one, whether they want to or not. Yeah, and Hangman's a lunatic, too, so he's just They're absolutely insane. Oh, yeah, he is. So. They yeah, sure he is. are. Well, we go from one personal match into another one. Things incredibly personal in this matchup. Uh, it's Darby Allen and Stin taking on the devious duo of Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage, but tonight it's in a casket match. Y'all didn't believe me when I said we was going to take over. That's why we had to prove a point. Put in the fear of God in Nick Way. Fox, I lived with you in your demons. I try to help you. It looks like you have some new friends. I got some friends too. Is he throwing out a challenge for all in London? We have a coffin match. Nick Way! My God, what a way! This was a test for you. You are fired! What are you gonna do? Who do you got? The true greats are always two steps ahead. Ain't that right, Stinger? In front of 80,000 people. I'm gonna throw your ass in a coffin. It's gonna be all over. It's showtime. We are expecting over 80,000 fans here tonight in Wembley Stadium. So cool to be here in London, seeing all the fans, seeing them, everyone in their wrestling shirts. We've got a little daddy ass love, even though that's not who's showing up here tonight, but we'll get into that uh, in a little bit. Uh, this casket match. I feel like we need to really talk about the X factor of this now, knowing that Christian has been added into the mix here. Um, and Christian is what I would like to say is his POS era. Um, his POS era? Yes. Yeah, that's a good way to call it. Or his Parasite era. That works as well. The Parasite kind of works more for the PG audience there, I guess. <laughs> uh, he's been able to align himself in, in opportunities and positions quite frequently lately. So he is very behind the scenes manipulating to get himself involved. But also just as the innovator that we know that he is. And now looking at... He's brilliant. He, he is a brilliant mind. And now from to have this opportunity to really dig deep, he was in the Buried Alive match with Jungle Boy Jack Perry. So he, recently he has a little bit more uh, history with this kind of style of match. But Darby and Sting... Uh, what do you think they're thinking going into this match? I, mean, I, I, I couldn't fathom to get guess. Get into their minds. What, what goes through Darby Allen's mind, I'll never know. I yeah. could live for a thousand lifetimes. <laughs> I will never know what that young man th thinks about. And Sting, I mean, you know Sting better than anybody. This Sting is, uh, you see the levels that Sting's pushing himself. Mm -hmm. He's got nothing to prove in his career. But every time he steps out in that ring, he's not missing a step. He's better. He's better. And he still keeps doing his thing better than anybody else. He's got Darby, and both of them, I hate to say it, but both of them have a real dark side, especially Sting with his past. They Darby's do. a little nuts. They certainly do. Paul, can I ask a question? You said Sting's got nothing to prove. Why is he still doing it? Why is he still putting his body through all that, all that torture? Passion. At this stage of the game, you know, when you've been successful, you've made money, you've won championships. At this game, it's all about passion and love for what you're doing. Period. That's the only reason a lot of people of that caliber are still around because they love it. He's a pro wrestler, man. That's Kip, that pro wrestling heart. That's what Kip, it is. Kip, I just want you to briefly touch on Swerve Strickland in this match because mm. we've seen a different side of him. We've seen what he's, what he's done to Nick Wayne to make this matchup with Darby that much more personal. I like the darkness in him now. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a big fan of the darkness, and I feel like this, not the band, I mean, well, okay. they're not that bad. Yeah, they were good. Them. Yeah, they're great. Great, great, Paul. <laughs> but the darkness in Swerve Strickland now combined with the absolute, oh, I love Christian Cage right now. Yes. Yeah. Swerve's a killer. Swerve's a killer. Do you know what I mean? It's, 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 yeah, it's well, going to be interesting. Christian is dangerous, and he's got so much experience. Mm -hmm. 
and then you've got Swerve who's motivated now to be devious. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous combination. Sure is, and I cannot wait to watch it here tonight. Guys, we are continuing to break down all the matches ahead of All In, but it's not just us here. We're going to take things on down to ringside. We've got Excalibur, Taz, and Tony Schiavone. Thank you, Renee. We are beyond excited to be here at ringside Wembley Stadium. More than 80,000 fans still filing in to join us here tonight. As Renee mentioned, I'm alongside Tony Schiavone, the human suplex machine, Taz. We have the best seat in the house. We are at ringside. We will be with you all night long. And we are so excited about All in London tonight. But we also have big news about All Out, the United Center, Chicago, Illinois. One week from tonight, a massive match against two men, Taz, that you know very well. Absolutely, and it, things are going to explode. I got a funny feeling, not to not to spoil what's the, the cat out of the bag here. It's fixing to go down in the ring right about now because one of my old good buddies is here yeah. in the ring. Without saying it, we see him. Absolutely, two of the most explosive, most powerful men in the ring will go at it at All Out coming up in one week. Ladies and gentlemen, Power House Hobbs. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. What I need right now is for everyone to sit their ass in their seats and pay attention to me. This is the biggest show in pro wrestling history, All In. But what I have sitting on this table is a contract for next week, All Out, that Miro hasn't signed. Last time we saw Miro, that bitch was laying out in the middle of this ring. So what I'm gonna do is take my ass back to America because 80,000 of you chavs don't deserve to see me. You cannot talk about the Redeemer without respecting a response, Taz. That's the thing, and I, I think Hobbs, I got a feeling he's getting what he wants right here, Shivani. I think this is his way to bait Miro out here, but be careful what you wish for with Miro. I agree, Taz. I think he wanted Miro to come out. He baited him to come out, and here he comes. Taz, I tell you, Hobbs has a lot of confidence against Miro, especially what happened the last time when he put Miro down. Yeah, well, the thing is with Hobbs, he's got no back down, no fear in him, Excalibur, as you know. No fear in the guy at all. Uh, he's a tough hombre from the West Coast, but speaking of tough hombres, this man coming down here, Excalibur's a bad dude. Yeah, this is going to be two meaty men slapping meat coming up in seven days' time. All out, Chicago, Illinois, the United Center. These two men about to put pen to paper. We have our security detail inside the ring to ensure there is no physicality, to ensure that nothing breaks down between these two men before all out next weekend in Chicago, but easier said than done. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how this thing uh, evolves. I think from a physical perspective, we might need more security. Just my observation. Well, we've had tight security all, all week here. Sign the goddamn contract. There you go, we got the match. We're just, you're just getting started here, I think. And we got uh, problems. Yeah, security needs to, security needs to do something before this boils over. You cannot have two ill-tempered men like Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs in a situation like this. Wow, potty mouth folks here. Oh, uh, yeah, they're into London. it already, right? I love it. I feel like I'm home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Hobbs is walking away. Playing a little game. Really? Yeah, playing a little game. Uh, oh, there you go. Oh, he tried to get his attention the other way. 
Oh, and there comes Hunt! And now, security finally trying to restrain Miro. And Hobbs trying to separate these two behemoths. And uh oh, here comes Hobbs. Oh, Hobbs is broken free. Miro oh. lands a solid right hand. Oh, down goes security. Oh, yeah, Miro's dropping guys here. Miro laying everyone out. And Hobbs, he may have drawn first blood, but Miro getting some revenge here tonight on Powerhouse Hobbs. Hobbs, Hobbs. Contracts is just words, but let me tell you the word of the Redeemer. Next week, an all-out redemption is coming for you, and it's going to look like a jacked Bulgarian that is going to break your spine and make you humble. Seven days. That's all we have to wait to see Miro and Powerhouse Hobbs face one-on-one -on -one Chicago, Illinois, all out on pay-per-view in seven days' time. Miro, Hobbs, it is going to be a battle. It is going to be physical, and it is going to be live next Sunday from the United Center. Not only that, we have the TNT Championship match. Luchasaurus, the champion. Can Darby Allen regain the title? We will find out a week from tonight at All Out, live on pay-per-view from Chicago. And we are less than 90 minutes away from All In London. So let's head back up to the commentary gantry and go back up to our panel. Starting to set the stage here tonight and looking ahead to next weekend for All Out. A lot of action happening here tonight. I was a little nervous of that whole interaction going down. You know, Miro gets fired up, Hobbs is fired up. You know, luckily it kind of broke down in a, in a peaceful. You've seen a ring collapse in your day. I've we seen a ring collapse. There's a tonight. table that's overturned, yeah. bodies flying. <laughs> you know, I'm just glad that both athletes got out somewhat healthy. How exciting. I cannot believe that we're here. It's all happening. AEW all in. You guys do not want to miss this. Join us live here tonight. We are going to be witnessing history as 80,000 plus fans will be filling Wembley Stadium to witness some of the biggest stars in our industry battle it out. It's all happening. It's all here tonight with AEW all in London. It's the biggest event in wrestling history as the stars of AEW descend on London. The anticipation for AEW All In is at an all-time high. These are their faces. This is their story. Welcome to AEW Countdown to All In. Did I ever think I was gonna be defending a world title in front of the most historic crowd in the history of professional wrestling? Yeah. It's a massive, humongous event. MJF's walking in as the AEW World Champion. It's a huge moment for him to step up as a mega star of this company and own that spotlight. Nobody is on the level of the devil. I always knew deep down that I was going to achieve this goal. I'm literally the most unstoppable AEW World Champion of all time. Adam Cole's experienced big moments in professional wrestling before. I imagine traveling the globe. I imagine winning world championships. And those boys and girls back there, they respect me. This could change the course of Adam Cole's life. Did I ever think this was gonna happen? No, but I'm damn glad that it has. To be known as the greatest tag team of all time, there's one thing we gotta do. Young Bucks. I am the greatest. I am the greatest. My power of innovation.
Well, a certain real world champ was traveling around the world, teaching all you simple people that he was the best in the world. I knew in my heart, he never was better than me a day in his life. Joe still thinks he's got something to prove. He wants to get that one back just because I beat him. But I lived for 20 years knowing that I couldn't beat Joe. The job is to beat me, not to survive me. It wasn't him conquering me in that ring. It was him escaping me. I want to pick a fight in London, England, and damn it, you will give me what I want. I've never said no to a fight. This is me setting you straight and making you understand how things work in this world. You call yourself the king of television? Well, I'm the king of wrestling. Come take my crown. Hikaru Shida had the best reign as AEW Women's World Champion of, I think, anyone. She was a champion during the pandemic, so she was competing in front of no one. A very emotional victory for the new AEW Women's World Champion. You saw the crowd reaction when she defeated Tony Storm to become the AEW Women's Champion. The heart of a champion, the instincts of a champion. They're all toxic, they're all backstabbing. It's disgusting. We have the powerful wrestlers, we have the very quick wrestlers, we have women with attitude. Hikaru Shida, Dr. Britt Baker, and Tony Storm, they know what it takes to be on top here in all elite wrestling. We're all four fighting for one title. These are four of the best wrestlers in all of professional wrestling. After what happened last week, maybe I should change a few things. So Don, my answer, if I want to be a part of the Don Callis family, is yes! Yes! Let's go drink Broadway dry and beat up some rednecks, just like back in the day, come on. What's with the picture there? If it's a gift for me, John, I want to see it. I do want to celebrate, and I want to celebrate with this picture with me all night long. Well, he's got some explaining to do here, doesn't he? You are 34 years of friendship be damned. Oh, Konosuke Takeshita was coming in with a steel chair. What, what, what was that? What? Will Ospreay! Don Callis called in reinforcements. Ospreay! He called in Will Ospreay, Taz. Out of nowhere! I'm here to tell you the truth about Kenny Omega. After everything I did for him, Kenny Omega has been like a cancer in my body. And what do you do with cancer? You cut it out. Callis came to us with an offer. And that job is taking Kenny Omega out. God of pro wrestling, you are going to show us. If you're going to start a beat down, you have to finish it. Kenny's not finished, and neither is he friendless. Because in London, Kenny will have there two of his greatest friends in Hangman and Kota Ibushi. The misery that you made me feel, Don, it's coming back to you for on you. Me and my family are gonna cut Kenny Omega out of this company for good. Since I was 10 years old, Uncle Don was always there, ready to coach and guide me. Myself and Kenny Omega make history. Former IWGP World US Champion. Heavyweight Champion. Former AEW World Champion. Put together by Don Callis. Uncle Don is the guy that stabbed you in the head with a screwdriver. It goes to show you, sometimes despite all your efforts, the things that you count on, they'll have your back. Kenny Omega, you all love him, but I know the real Kenny Omega. The real Kenny Omega is a coward and a punk. Kenny and his friends have deceived all of you into believing that the elite is the peak of Bullet Club. We're here to set the record straight. You see, we have history. You two have history, Kenny and Juice. I ran you out of New Japan for wrestling. You guys can call yourselves the elite. There will be no elite without Bullet Club. We're going to show you guys. It's more than about fighting. This is about more than that. Heart, passion, soul, friendship. Wembley. 80,000 people. Hangman, Ibushi, Kenny Omega. You got an ass whooping coming from Bullet Club Gold. Two of his greatest tag team partners of all time, the Hanger and Ibushi. Three of the best to, to ever wrestle wrestling. At the same time, one team. One stadium, we will be unstoppable. Kenny, if you want someone to put you out of your misery, that's what Don Callis sees. Don, you call me the, the god, god of pro wrestling. pro wrestling. As the god of pro wrestling, I have the power to give it. I have the power to take it away. I'm gonna embarrass you. It's all on the line for you. 
you're going to feel every reaction from this crowd. And I hate to think what your mental state is going to be like when you get embarrassed. From not just Don Callis, from Kanosuke Takeshita. Don Callis, you will never win this battle. At all in. Will it come go? Show that they are a cut above the elite. We are the heart. We are the soul. We are the elite. What do I think about FDR? I, I don't like him. About 2016, we really started to make some noise in the tag division. We really started making some waves for ourselves. And until that time, Matt and Nick had been the unquestioned kings of tag team wrestling. Our friend Cody actually came up with the initials on our hit show on YouTube, being the elite FTR. At the time, it meant F the Revival. <laughs> they started this uh, FTR, uh, the Revival. And, um, you know, that, that's something that's always stuck with me. And I, I, uh, I hold a grudge. I, I will admit that I hold a grudge. And it's 2023, and I can't say that I let go of that grudge. Of course it made them furious, because we were laughing about it. And uh, we laughed about it because we knew we were better than them. We never had to acknowledge them. They, they started taking the shots at us because they were finally questioned as the greatest tag team in the world. And that's carried over. You know, we came to AEW almost strictly for that reason, to find out who is the best. At the end of the day, when we finally decide to hang up our sneakers, everybody is collectively finally gonna give us our flowers and they're finally gonna say, the Young Bucks are the best tag team to ever do it. And in my opinion, they're just gonna be remembered as the tag team that the Young Bucks named on their YouTube show. I'm very proud and, and I'm, I'm happy about how they've carried tag team wrestling. But also, on the other side of that coin, you have FTR. And we've done everything they've done and maybe even a couple of steps more than that. I don't know another tag team that has a resume like FTR, except maybe the Young Bucks. We've been doing it better than them, longer than them, at a higher level than them. Now, we get to do it on the biggest stage of our careers for any of us. Wembley is where we put the bow on our legacy. FTR versus Young Bucks, the biggest tag team match of all time. These stadium shows, the different beasts. It's scary, it's intimidating, it's so big, you don't realize how big it is until you're in the eye of the storm. At the end of the day, FTR, Dax and Cash will be the absolute best tag team of all time, bar none. And at Wembley, we prove it. The relationship between me and CM Punk, it's always been complex outside the ring. We've been there for each other in our toughest times. At the same time, we've both caused some of the roughest incidents that we've had in our life. In 60 minutes, you failed. And tonight, you'll fail again. Samoa Joe is going to retain the ROH World Heavyweight Championship in the greatest trilogy in ROH history. Joe was a guy that brought the best out of me. If there's one thing that I'll never do is forget who Samoa Joe is. You've always been competitors, and that's how it always will be. Why has CM Punk never been able to beat Samoa Joe? You gotta go with Samoa Joe. It really does look as though nothing has changed. Turning Joe's momentum against him. And now using Joe's... Oh, wait. Oh, back to the choke. On the escape. Hold on a second. Shoulders down. Two of the I cannot imagine it sits well with Samoa Joe. I think to have some kind of an identity crisis is really scary. And I think that that can make a scary man even scarier. Joe is hell-bent to not just beat Punk, destroy him. I want to pick a fight in London, England, and damn it, you will give me what I want! Did I win because along the way I learned something? to beat you, or along the way did you lose something? Joe is rock! What in the world is this? I accept, bitch! CM Punk wins, Joe loses. Can you live with that? This match is really just a battle of pride, and it's a battle for Samoa Joe at redemption. Does this match mean everything to me? Yes, because it's about everything we've done. 
And every time I wrestle you, I leave pieces of myself in the ring. And it's hard to put the pieces back together afterwards. I take from you, Punk, which some say you don't deserve to have in the first place. I will be the king of AEW. I don't necessarily think that either of us are going to be the same after this. Why do you have your sights set on Chris Jericho? Oh, my, my sights set on Jericho. You have a laugh. Gosh, the resume of both of these men. Uh, this is a match that's make or break for Will Ospreay. Mate, when I was a teenager, I was watching Chris Jericho. Help, my dad knows Chris Jericho, my granddad knows Chris Jericho, do you know what I mean? One could say that because we're wrestling in London and Will Ospreay is from Great Britain, that he would have the advantage. But here's the fact, Chris Jericho is a mega star. Jericho has been a star on the major level much longer than Will Ospreay. 30 years of pro wrestling, and it's not just been 30 years, bits and bobs, bits and bobs, some you can drift off, some you can't consistently. A man that is known for his reinvention. He's been able to have the grandiose, the cachet, all of those bells and whistles, the things that come with being Chris Jericho. Then you look at somebody like Will Ospreay, who has been deemed the greatest of all time uh, from a very young age. We've seen Will Ospreay compete, not just here in AEW, but around the world. And there are very few athletes ever that have walked this earth quite like Will Ospreay. Will Ospreay is a once-in-a-generation professional wrestler, and in my opinion, he's the best in the world today. You know what I offered him? Your head on a platter at Wembley. After I beat you in wrestling's biggest event, I am going to be the only man to say I've beaten Kenny Omega, Okada, and Chris Jericho in two months. And we can rule the world. This is Wembley. It's the biggest show of my career. Don't tell me this is a vanity project for me. This is bigger than any WrestleMania. This is bigger than any Tokyo Dome. This is bigger than anything. You're coming at this from the bottom. I'm coming at this from the top of the effing mountain with everyone trying to knock me off and every hater in social media Damn, trying to predict my demise. I know I am the best wrestler in the world. All your championships, all your legacy. I respect it all, mate. But I'm better than you. Women's wrestling is at a point now where we are viewed equally as the men. We're not just women wrestlers, we're wrestlers, we're athletes. Uh, this match is so important to all four women. To be the AEW Women's Champion is everything to that entire division. The one thing that makes this women's division so special is the arrival of me. She's returning home for the first time wrestling in a long, long time. I haven't wrestled in the UK in nine years, so I do feel like I have a lot of pressure. And now Soraya, good oh. night on Sky Blue! To be on the sidelines and now be back center stage in front of 80,000 plus people, but especially her family, for me, it's got to be Soraya. The only thing special about this women's division is myself and the outcast. She wants that title. She wants it off of Sheeta. Ten years ago, I moved to the United Kingdom and I made a big name for myself. And now I go back and what a homecoming it will be. Wembley Stadium, all of those people coming to see me. Well, Britt Baker, she wants to become the AEW Women's World Champion again. She's obsessed with it. I respect that about Britt. She punched the ticket. The match is set. I know everything that's coming. I know what to expect. I know these three wrestlers better than they know themselves. I think I have that advantage more than anybody. Sheena's got a big target on her right now against three extremely capable women that are all former world champions. There's no crack in Hikaru Shida. I have so many things want to do with this title. I can't lose this at Wembley. Shida can't get through a match without her kendo stick. So no, Shida, you are not ready to face me for the very first time. I have my two friends out there. Everything is gonna go according to plan. I can't think of anything I want more than to hold that title up high in front of 80,000 plus people. Still AEW Uman's world champion. This is an incredibly interesting dynamic that me and Max find ourselves in. Boom! It connects! One, two! What? 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 You know, traditionally, pro wrestling, it's two guys who can't stand each other. A 30-minute 
time limit draw. Five more minutes. Two guys who want to rip each other apart. Two guys who will do anything and everything to win their match. We just had the drawing for the Blind Eliminator Tournament, and the first name I drew was Adam Cole. My whole entire life, I don't think I've ever actually had a real friend that I could trust and that I could be 110% open with. The second name that we drew, the man who will be your partner in the tournament, MJF. It's borderline strange that two best friends are going into AEW's biggest event of all time, challenging for the most precious prize in AEW. Good luck, partner. Where you been? I've been here doing cardio for an hour. Let's go. Come on. I get to be in the main event for the grandest prize in professional wrestling, the Triple B, and I get to make history with someone who taught me that I don't have to be on guard 24-7. It's an unexpected relationship, but I do think that it's a real relationship. It's been something that no one thought was possible. He has become one of, if not my very best friend. He sacrificed Cole to block the Shatter Machine! But at the end of the day, Max has something that I want. And as much as I appreciate and respect the fact that I'm going in there, biggest match of my entire life, with my best friend, that means the world. It would mean just as much. It would mean everything to become the AEW World Champion that night. He's not beating me. So that's kind of like pointless to answer that. I made you a promise. I'd give you a shot at the Triple B. This is business. You don't deserve just any match. You deserve the match. This is about being top dog. MJF wants to hold on to that. Adam Cole wants that again. How poetic would it be for us both to walk out of Wembley world champions? I entered this sport at 18 years old. I was a prodigy. I knew it all, or at least I thought I did. And then I met you and I. I truly appreciate you as a competitor. <laughs> the both of us want to go down as the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. I love you like a brother, but a win in Wembley will make me legendary. I pray to God you bring your A game, because I know I'm going to bring mine. MJF, Adam Cole. Teammates become opponents in the main event. Oh, in. I wouldn't have it any other way, baby. That is our main event tonight. MJF looks to defend against his best friend, Adam Cole. More than 80,000 fans joining us here tonight in Wembley Stadium from over 70 countries, including the United States. Tony Schiavone. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of all elite wrestling, it is wonderful being in London. And we want to take this time to thank each and every one of you for being here and joining us tonight for... That's, that's gonna take Tony a long time to go one by one and thank these fans personally. Yeah, we got a little surprise visitor here who, trust me, will not let Shivani take too much more of that mic time. If he's here, I mean, that's his music. Yeah, that's last, Jeff. Last that's Jared. Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> yes. There it is, told you, Jeff, Jeff Jarrett. He's been all over London, all over the UK media. Sanji, bow tie. Got Jay Lethal there, the, the wife of Jay Lee Jay Lee Lee is not Jeff Jarrett's wife. No. You're talking about Karen Jarrett. Karen, yes. yes. And then Sutton, I'm saying, seven foot four, one in a billion. You got a great overhead view of the ramp there. And, and the same height as Big Ben. <laughs> Get it? I guess not. Ben Wallace? <laughs> well, they're filling in, they're filing in here. Got it. There's a lot of people here right now. A lot of people here, there's still a lot more to come. As Sanjay Duck, Karen Jarrett, Sutton, I'm saying, oh, Karen just swiped the microphone from Tony. Tony's funny, now Jeff Jarrett. It's probably because that really bad green suit that he's wearing. Karen's sick of looking at that suit that Siobhan is wearing. It's horrible. Jeff Jarrett, the guitar. Put your life in the hands of a rock. Tony Shivani, you slap nut. Get the <laughs> hell out of my ring right now. Yes, that's what you said to Shivani <laughs> in the announcer stress room earlier. And I'm not even joking. Shivani, <laughs> you want to give these fannies, these dafties, these slags, shall I say, a bunch of wankers? You want to give them credit? 
You want to give them credit for paving the way? You want to give them credit for paving the way in the biggest professional wrestling event in history? No, 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 no. You know as well as I do, the United States of America paved the way for this event. USA, US. Shut up, that's not right. here. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, American professional wrestling fans are much better than you morons. And it goes without saying, American wrestlers absolutely paved the way for this event. It damn sure wasn't. No, 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 it wasn't Big Daddy. It wasn't Haystacks. It wasn't one single solitary wrestler from that independent local yokel show you called World of Sport. But most importantly, you folks know who paved the way. It's American promoters. That's right. The Crockett's in Carolina, the Von Erichs in Texas, the Grams in Florida. Oh boy. Now this is I didn't expect this reaction at all. Oh my god. Karen. And Dallas shed dare I say that the Jarrett's paved the way for the biggest event. Jeff Jarrett may be in for a very big wake-up call. Uh, a little bit of a surprise. Yeah. Paul White and Anthony Agogo, they've left the panel position. They're now down at ringside. And Hold on a second. I know that guy. Bringing in some reinforcements. Rado. He's from right over here, mate. Scotland. Which is oh, close. That's but not far. You take a boat for the two. But Grado, great independent star in Scotland. He was a, he was on the media tour with Jeff Jarrett. Jarrett cracked a guitar over Grado's head. And it seems that Grado hasn't forgotten about it. Well, oh, he's got Paul White, who's just he's a giant. And you got Anthony Gogo, who will punch your lights out. A medalist from right here. Yeah. In England, Anthony Agogo, middleweight medalist in the Olympics. He's been a very dangerous professional wrestler in his own right. You want to talk about dangerous professional wrestlers? Paul White. Oh. No more BS. Yeah, Grado's got a singlet on. He's got a fanny pack going. People love him. He's, he looks a little, uh, a little rough. But look at. Oh, Weiss just knocked out Sutton Singh. Oh, big guy heat. And Grado landed right on Jeff Jarrett. Jay Lethal's in a lot of trouble. Jay Lethal gets planted down. And now Jarrett in the grip of Paul White. But instead, Anthony Gogo. Hand. Oh. oh no, not the guitar, the headbutt, and Grado getting his revenge. Wow. Well, an unexpected appearance by Paul White, Grado, and Anthony Agogo. As we approach zero hour, all in London. Just over one hour to go before the biggest event in professional wrestling starts. You still have so many ways to join us. Scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen. You do not want to miss a moment.
Hour two is underway here for Zero Hour AEW All in London. The chaos that has already taken place inside the stadium as we are setting the stage for All in over 80 thousand fans making their way inside Wembley Stadium. We are making history here tonight. So exciting. I'm Renee Paquette joined by the UK's own Kip Sabian. How you doing today? I have never seen Paul White run so fast. <laughs> He's got to get back up here. He better. You guys didn't see it. He picked up Anthony Agogo and ran down. He can be fast when he needs to be. He's it's incredible. To give him a little incentive. It's incredible. How are we feeling so far tonight? I mean, we've already got some action under our belts. We, we've been kind of pumping what all the matches mm -hmm. are looking like tonight. How does it feel for you? Hometown. I mean, Ish. it's it's, Ish. it's it's emotional to be in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, it's I've been here since day one, so it's been a long time waiting for this to happen. Yes. We're finally here, and it's in Wembley Stadium. Beautiful. It's, 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 a, it's a storybook situation right now. Um, and the matches themselves are pretty tasty. Chef's kiss sure is. Well, we want you guys to not miss any of it. So here is how you guys can order the pay-per-view. Of course, call your cable and satellite providers, Dave and Buster's in select live locations, Tom's Watch Bar also live in select locations, Fight the Zone, SkyPPV.com, YouTube.com, and available in international markets. Time to get in to the action here. The House of Black has conjured up the spirit of badass Billy Gunn as his teams with the acclaimed looking to achieve Trio's gold. I just hope you know how much we love you and we're gonna miss you. see again. There's a badass coming to London and his name is Billy Gunn. Okay, House of Black has been doing a lot of damage to the acclaimed and to Billy Gunn. We saw him leave his boots in the middle of the ring. They've been tormenting him ever since. And now tonight we get to see badass Billy Gunn in the ring. What does that mean? <laughs> so uh, the acclaimed Billy Gunn if anyone can get over an entire 80,000 seat arena, mm -hmm. plus going scissor me daddy ass, they, in my book, they're the winners. They, they Before the match has started, they win. Uh, I mean, when we have those trios titles on the line, it will be very interesting to see how this all shakes out amongst all of these teams. Uh, but another guy that we got to check in with right now, he's out there amongst the masses in Wembley Stadium. RJ, what's going on out there, buddy? Hello, Renee. The weather is holding up, but these fans are already losing their minds. Two of those mindless fans are here with me now. What are your names? Tony. Andrew. Where are you guys from? Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah. Just my luck. Halfway across the world, I got two guys from Phoenix. <laughs> Never mind. Back to you, Renee. <laughs> I mean, do a little crowdsourcing. We're happy to see people from Phoenix made their way up here. But, I mean, we're going international here tonight. Uh, now, tonight's main event, we've got two seemingly best friends. They're battling it out in our biggest stage yet for the most coveted title in our sport, the AEW world title with Adam Cole taking on MJF. Did I ever think I was going to be defending a world title in front of the most historic crowd in the history of professional wrestling? Yeah. It's a massive, humongous event. MJF's walking in as the AEW world champion. It's a huge moment for him to step up as a mega star of this company and own that spotlight. Nobody is on the level of the devil. I always knew deep down that I was going to achieve this goal. I'm literally the most unstoppable AEW world champion of all time. Adam Cole's experienced big moments in professional wrestling before. 
I imagine traveling the globe. I imagine winning world championships. And those boys and girls back there, they respect me. This could change the course of Adam Cole's life. Did I ever think this was going to happen? No, but I'm damn glad that it has. This is an incredibly interesting dynamic that me and Max find ourselves in. Boom! It connects! One, two! Wait, what? What? You know, traditionally, pro wrestling, it's two guys who can't stand each other. A 30-minute time limit draw. Five more minutes. Two guys who want to rip each other apart. Two guys who will do anything and everything to win their match. We just had the drawing for the Blind Eliminator Tournament, and the first name I drew was Adam Cole. My whole entire life, I don't think I've ever actually had a real friend that I could trust and that I could be 110% open with. The second name that we drew, the man who will be your partner in the tournament, MJF. It's borderline strange that two best friends are going into AEW's biggest event of all time, challenging for the most precious prize in AEW. Good luck, partner. Where you been? I've been here doing cardio for an hour. Let's go, come on. I get to be in the main event for the grandest prize in professional wrestling, the Triple B, and I get to make history with someone who taught me that I don't have to be on guard 24-7. It's an unexpected relationship, but I do think that it's a real relationship. It's been something that no one thought was possible. He has become one of, if not my very best friend. He sacrificed Cole to block the Shatter Machine! But at the end of the day, Max has something that I want. And as much as I appreciate and respect the fact that I'm going in there, biggest match of my entire life, with my best friend, that means the world. It would mean just as much. It would mean everything to become the AEW World Champion that night. He's not beating me. So that's kind of like pointless to answer that. I made you a promise. I'd give you a shot at the Triple B. This is business. You don't deserve just any match. You deserve the match. This is about being top dog. MJF wants to hold on to that. Adam Cole wants that again. How poetic would it be for us both to walk out of Wembley world champions? I entered this sport at 18 years old. I was a prodigy. I knew it all, or at least I thought I did. And then I met you, and I truly appreciate you as a competitor. <laughs> the both of us want to go down as the greatest professional wrestlers of all time. I love you like a brother, but a win in Wembley will make me legendary. I pray to God you bring your A-game, because I know I'm going to bring mine. MJF, Adam Cole. Teammates become opponents in the main event. Oh, in. I wouldn't have it any other way, baby. That is tonight's main event, but things are heating up here at Wembley. I mean, we've got over 80,000 fans that are set, making their way in here. We can see everybody here behind us right now. It is electric. I can feel it through this studio that we are in right now. I mean, look at, look at this mass of people. It's so impressive to have everybody come here together, all in the name of professional wrestling. We love it. Unreal. So great. All right, let's let's talk about this this main event. Uh, MJF, Adam Cole, AEW World Title. A lot of question marks around this relationship. Adam Cole snapped at me uh, this past week on Dynamite when I questioned the authenticity of it. Where, where do you stand on it? And let's be honest. MJF is a tosspot. Sure is. Let's be honest. But yeah. I do believe that the friendship that him and Cole have is real. Well, but this is professional wrestling, Renee. <laughs> sure. How many friendships in professional wrestling can outlast that cold knife in the back, courtesy of ambition? I think MJF is going to do something. And under the brightest light either of these men have been under. I mean, you talk about the pressure that these two are under, not only opening the show here tonight, but then being able to be the main event here. Do you see one of these men turning on the other? Who will it be, I guess, is the better uh -huh. question. I feel like once we've seen this tag match, mm -hmm. that is then going to give us an indication of where they're at. 
Okay, I guess you're right. We'll, we'll have, have to, to see how they work together. We're just going to have to see how this goes. Well, like I said, I mean, these two are going to be in the main event tonight. But right now, they are working together as a tag team. We'll see how this goes. The Ring of Honor World Tag Team titles are on the line. Let's take things down to ringside to get into more action here on Zero Hour. There is a buzz reverberating throughout Wembley Stadium. We are just moments away from seeing our first match of the night. I'm Excalibur, joined by the great Tony Schiavone, the human suplex machine, Taz. We are so excited to be here for All in London tonight. Coming your way live on pay-per-view at the top of the hour. You still have so many ways to join us. Bleacher Report, Fight TV internationally, DAZN, YouTube.com, PPV.com. I mean, there is no excuse to not join us at the top of the hour. But right now, we are kicking things off with the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship Latin match. Let's go to the Dapper Yapper, Justin Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, your opening contest is scheduled for one fall. And it is for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship. Mark Davis, Ozzy, open. Taz, this past Wednesday night, Ozzy Open defended those Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships against arguably one of the greatest tag teams of all time, Matt and Jeff Hardy. Yeah, and very impressive. That's, uh, I think you might have said it during that broadcast this past Wednesday. Momentum. That was momentum for sure for these two young cats right here. Ozzy Open, the ROH Tag Team Champions. Shivani, I don't know about you, buddy. I think they got some momentum going in here against the challenge. I don't think there's any question, Taz, and the momentum started really before the Hardys match. These Two young men have been willing to defend those ROH tag team belts against any team, and they've been successful, Excalibur. Yeah, winning the titles last month in a four-way match just before this honor. Four successful title defenses for Aussie Open on the road to all in London. And the advantage they have is a singular focus here tonight. They have one match to worry about. They have one task to worry about, and it's defending those Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship. Success as a team and as, as friends, there's been a little bit of animosity breaking through when it comes to that world title. I will finish my thought after this boom. <laughs> Nevertheless, Taz and his caliber, I, I, have you guys ever seen guys who are going to wrestle for the world title take a match earlier in the same show? You know, I, I, I can't recall it happening. I mean, you know. But, uh, oh, yeah. I'm good. No, I'll oh, get back to you in a second. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh, maybe I'll get back to you now. <laughs> hey, it's great move. But anyway, these two guys are taking this, and they got a title match later on. I don't get it. Yeah, Aussie open with a jump start. Come on, the gates early. Well, I mean, look, you can't blame them. I mean, MJF, Adam Cole, they were going to do the, the whole pandering thing to get all these people into the 80,000 people into it. And they're like, uh-uh, you, you're going to get the jump on you. Absolutely. Great Davis move. and Fletcher with Cole and Max hoisted up, making a sprint. Big collider coming up. Oh! That's tough on a lower back right there. And you know that win, lose, or draw for MJF and Adam Cole 
any injuries they sustain in this match undoubtedly will come into play later on tonight, our main event, the AEW World Championship matches. Davis looking to cover here, and... You heard no. the bell ring that was officially both, both teams and the men got in the ring, and that's why the bell rang. It was a little crazy on the outside here. Thanks, Tommy. You bring up a great point about the injuries. Let me ask you this. If Maxwell Jacob Freeman is being beaten up, okay, is Adam Cole going to tag in, or is he going to let him be beaten up more for the title match coming up later tonight? I mean, that's that's the tough calculus that Adam Cole has to do. How much does winning tag team gold alongside MJF mean to him? How much does the AEW World Championship mean to Adam Cole? I mean, we've seen this friendship blossom. We've seen MJF really turn over a new leaf. Times when he could have taken advantage of Adam Cole. He opts not to. As a thumb to the eyes for both Davis and Fletcher. Well, I'll tell you, listen, I, my opinion, I do think MJF, oh, he almost got there. MJF and Adam Cole, they want to win this match. They want those ROH tag team titles. There's a 10, almost. Oh, no, Fletcher. Oh, oh, great move. I mean, they're both competitive guys. They want to win. They certainly do as Cole just slammed into the barricade to the right of our broadcast position. Davis planning down MJF. The crowns are up and no. I don't like that cover by Davis that time. But that is, I mean, that's that's not a cover he, he's going to win with. We've seen members of United Empire use that type of cover before. That's something that gets under their opponent's skin. Well, here's what you referenced next now. But Adam Cole getting destroyed into that guard round. It was right to our right. It was loud as heck. And right on the ribs. Right on the right side of the rib cage. Chop across the windpipe by MJF. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Oh, he's, he's MJF looking for the kangaroo kick. Kangaroo well. kick, no. Oh, ah, kangaroo Jones, almost. <laughs> I think the, the lower back of MJF may have seized up. He was going, he was looking for the kangaroo kick, but then MJF just collapsed. Yeah, he got a little bit too close to Mark Davis. Take a look at this shot, would you? And more than 80,000 fans still filing in. <laughs> London Wembley Stadium. Just about 80,000 people saying that kangaroo kick. Kind of funny. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You know, we've talked about the friendship between MJF and Adam Cole. What about the friendship, or I would say, former friendship between Roderick Strong? Oh, and Adam Cole. Roderick keeps saying that MJF is going to betray Adam Cole, and we've seen Roderick just, just grow more and more estranged. I don't want to take sides, but I think Roderick is, is the odd man out, and he's been showing temper tantrums, and it's uh, it's not been good for him at all. And MJF dropped toe hold. Oh. Well, that's going to change the complexion of this match, I would think. Davis splits the uprights on Fletcher. That's a yambag shot for sure. Yeah. That was very kind of you to say. You lock that in, split the uprights. And he's close. MJF's trying to get out and pull in this thing. Can he get that tag? Davis grabs the boot, trying to drag MJF back over. Swinging up, missed by Davis, and the tag is made. Pull now legal. Pull, oh. pull. Kick, crack, oh, nice shot, Mark Davis. Ah, he shot right there. Man, Tony, what a shot. Then another kick to the face on Fletcher. Now Adam Cole was all fired up. You know, that shot to the rib cage on the safety rail didn't seem to phase him at all. No, well, you're right, Shabon. It did not slow him down a bit. He is still cooking right now. He sure is. And right now, Kyle Fletcher can bear. Oh, Kyle kind of lured him in that time, Taz. Yeah, he did. And kicking the arm for that close out backstabber right there. Can he get the win? The backstabber, the cover by Cole. Deep hook and no Fletcher. That backstabber was kind of high. It was almost like he was on the back of the head that time. He's out. Fletcher clutching the back of his neck. His fans just over 40 minutes away, all in London live on pay per view. Still have a chance to join us as Cole looking for Panama Sunrise here. This could be it if he nails it, but no. Fletcher uses his speed. Escapes in and what a shot by Cole. I'm not so sure any teeth came out that time. Yeah, I think, he, I think Fletcher swallowed them all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> MJF, Adam Cole, they are feeling it here at Wembley, and they're calling for the double clothesline. They're going to get it. They're going to get it. Tag made, Fletcher. There's no Mark Davis around at all. He's still on the floor. That's why I'm thinking they're going to nail it. Don't, no, Fletcher was oh, on the floor, no. and the assist pulls. Fletcher out of harm's way, but Aussie open. Go crashing down. Is, what is that, Cole? And, he wants him to dive. Well, MJF doesn't dive much. It's well, a rare thing. The only time he's, he's dove before is when the rope's been held open for him by Adam Cole. You no, know, think about it. Think this over, MJF. It's not worth it. you got to defend your title later on. Yeah, one, the guy holding the rope feet. One twist of the ankle. One. If, if Cole 
We're gonna, to tighten the ropes, if he were to do anything, well, this could gonna spell disaster. He's going to do it. MJF, no. no. He's going to uh, do it. He's yeah. not going to do it. Fletcher pulls Cole down to the floor. Ozzy Open swarming. Cole on the floor. And oh, double shots there from Ozzy Open. That's the thing. That's excellent chemistry amongst Ozzy Open. These guys are a legitimate team. And they've been a team for many, Long many time. years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Competing here all over the UK, but we're a long way from the frog and bucket Manchester as Fletcher rocks the head of MJF the Aussie arrow oh that might be it right there guys Davis to Got it. oh no wow. what a way to kick off our broadcast that would be for Aussie Open notching a win for United Empire defending the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship that Will Ospreay later on tonight potentially could defeat one of the greatest of all time, Chris Jericho. This could be a banner evening for United Empire as Davis and Fletcher of MJF in the middle. No! Friendly fire there from Aussie Open. Oh my God. Here comes a kangaroo kick. MJF, the eyes are wide. The kick! Oh! Kick! And the oh fans are on their kangaroo kick! And there's no kangaroos on Long Island! I'm impressed! <laughs> Not that I know of. The kangaroo kick gets Wembley Stadium on its feet! I tell you, say what you want about it, it kind of looks goofy right at the beginning, but he nails it! <laughs> it works, yeah. It works! And now... The tag is made. MJF moving with speed, moving with purpose, as is Cole. Fletcher sent in. Goal! Pulls on Fletcher. High on the back of his neck. Two, three! Well, how about that? No winners of this match. And new Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions, Adam Cole and Maxwell, Jacob, Freeman. There was no dissension. There was no nothing. There was just tag team precision. And now, this 67 Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. Look ahead to our main event tonight. As Cole taking a long, hard look. There it is, right there. What a devastating double clothesline. But inside the ring, Adam Cole taking a long, hard look at MJF's AEW World Championship. That will be on the line in our main event. The new Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions will meet one-on-one, -on -one, all in London. The main event, MJF and Adam Cole, the best friends, battle it out here in London. Got to put friendship aside. No question, there's your QR code that you can scan right now to join us. Right on the left of your screen. On Bleacher Report, your traditional cable and satellite providers. Select David Buster's Tom Washbar location, Fight TV, The Zone, Sky Italia, PPV.com, YouTube.com, internationally. All in London, live at the top of the hour, less than 40 minutes away. That man, Adam Cole will face MJF, his best friend, for the AEW World Championship. And right now, let's head upstairs and back to our esteemed panel. And just like that, new Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. For anybody that was out here doubting, Adam Cole and MJF, I mean, yeah, I think I gotta put my foot in my mouth on that one, too. I, I, I'm a believer now, because I, I honestly thought something was gonna happen, and those guys worked amazingly well together. Pulled off a great win. Will? I mean, like a Muppet now after that. <laughs> a Muppet. <laughs> An absolute Muppet. I, uh, I can turn you into a Muppet. Hey, don't that, do that. that. This is a PG program. Okay, okay. That. I'm just saying. It's, you know. uh, let's talk about tonight's main event now. now. Now they've had their first match. Now it's time for them to focus on what's going to happen with the AEW World Championship. Who's going to be leaving with that title? Is the devil coming out? I mean, I think he's always bubbling at the surface with that guy. Anthony, what do you think? I think, well, first, let's put over how, how talented they both are. 
um, to wrestle twice in in a stadium like this. To, hey, that's not a that's a double payday. Yeah, it is. But I know <laughs> that's it, a it, is, it, it is. That you is always point. step up for a double payday. But never, no, of course. <laughs> but however, however, they've emotionally had to go up themselves again mm -hmm. twice to one night. It's a big ask. It is. It's a big ask. That's what I'm saying. It's a big ask, but they got it done, and now more championship gold around their waist. Uh, wait, get, wait. Can you guys go back what? a second? Whoa. Mercedes oh Monet oh. here in the building. I mean, we knew that big stars were going to be out here tonight, but to have Mercedes in the building, you know that word travels fast around here. I can't imagine what the girls are. Uh, they must be in a bit of a tizzy in the locker room right the, now. The women's locker right now is real nervous. Ooh, unbelievable wow. to see Mercedes. I mean, she just brings such a massive amount of star power to have her out here in the crowd. You know she's going to have her eyes on this matchup. It is a four-way matchup. Four of the biggest female stars in all elite wrestling. We've got Sheeta, Soraya, Tony Storm, Britt Baker, all four of these women looking to walk out of Wembley Stadium with that AEW Women's Championship. Now, Soraya has been in town all week doing all the big media outlets. Here she is at Good Morning Britain. We are joined by wrestling superstar Soraya. <laughs> Over 80,000 wrestling fans will be heading Jack to Whitehall was Sunday. with Soraya. And for her to be home, uh, I mean, for Anthony, for Kip, you guys know what it feels like to be home. For Soraya, she has not been here, especially not inside a wrestling ring in close to eight years. This is huge. It's a real Cinderella story. I got to do a few media appearances with her and she's just so excited and to know her when she started like i did yes. i knew when she was that young girl with the grit then that career ending injury which sucks you know it just sucks your soul out yeah. and then now she's back and now she's in this match in her hometown i mean i think she's very dangerous for all three of those other women in that ring because when i see soraya again that soraya that i first met she had a little dirt on her shoulder a little oh, rough around gritty. the edges and yeah. i think when you get that time back home you kind of dig back into that girl that she used to be Absolutely. yes she is a worldwide star now but i think she still has that grit firing in her belt i spent a few days with her i can guarantee you she still <laughs> has that grit she's she's pretty saucy who do you she's guys see still out? her mother's daughter she sure is <laughs> there That's, you go you know what that's the best way to put it. Um, all right, guys, we've got more action happening here. We're going to take things on backstage. We've got Lexi Nair hanging out backstage with one of the participants. Here with Britt Baker. You were at the first All-In five years ago, and here we are today at All-In in London. Yep, we are in London at Wembley Stadium. That is a sentence I never thought I'd hear myself say. But complacent is also a word I never thought I'd hear myself say, but that's what it feels like this women's division has become. Just cruising along the road that I paved. Because when I was champion, it was must-see TV. I was promo of the year, match of the year, wrestler of the year. And then I, too, fell complacent. I allowed myself to take a back seat, assuming that someone else would rise to the occasion. But there's only one me. And almost five years ago today, I walked in the ring at the first All In, just the nervous, happy to be there girl that nobody knew. But tonight, at Wembley Stadium, I walk out there a bona fide star, ready and more determined than ever to show you fans why I'm the baddest bitch on the block and the face of the women's division. Tonight, we all make history because we are all elite. And tonight, I walk out of here champion into a whole new era. The era of the DMD. It's still really hard to deny the talent, the charisma, the DNA that Britt Baker has put into the entire women's division here in AEW. It's hard to bet against her in a match like this. Did you see Britt Baker's eyes right there? It's been a long time since I've seen her that focused mm -hmm. and determined. She's got a real angry look to her face, yeah. a real angry set right now. So this, this adds fuel to the fire. There's so many hopes and dreams on this match for our women's division. And then, you know, you've got a shark up in the stands. 
yeah. that's circling the waters. <laughs> no. You know, because, you know, Mercedes has got a big bite when it comes Ab to that championship absolutely. material. Absolutely. But, yes, it's four of the biggest names in women's professional wrestling. Sheeta, Soraya, Tony Storm, Britt Baker, all four of these women vying for that AEW Women's Championship right here in Wembley. Hikaru Shida had the best reign as AEW Women's World Champion of, I think, anyone. She was a champion during the pandemic, so she was competing in front of no one. A very emotional victory for the new AEW Women's World Champion. You saw the crowd reaction when she defeated Tony Storm to become the AEW Women's Champion. The heart of a champion, the instincts of a champion. They're all toxic, they're all backstabbing. It's disgusting. We have the powerful wrestlers. We have the very quick wrestlers. We have women with attitude. Hikaru Shida, Dr. Britt Baker, and Tony Storm, they know what it takes to be on top here in all elite wrestling. We're all four fighting for one title. These are four of the best wrestlers in all of professional wrestling. Women's wrestling is at a point now where we are viewed equally as the men. We're not just women wrestlers, we're wrestlers, we're athletes. Uh, this match is so important to all four women. To be the AEW women's champion is everything to that entire division. The one thing that makes this women's division so special is the arrival of me. She's returning home for the first time wrestling in a long, long time. I haven't wrestled in the UK in nine years, so I do feel like I have a lot of pressure. And now Soraya, good oh. night on Sky Blue! To be on the sidelines and now be back center stage in front of 80,000 plus people, but especially her family, for me, it's got to be Soraya. The only thing special about this women's division is myself and the outcast. She wants that title. She wants it off of Sheeta. Ten years ago, I moved to the United Kingdom and I made a big name for myself. And now I go back and what a homecoming it will be. Wembley Stadium, all of those people coming to see me. Well, Britt Baker, she wants to become the AEW Women's World Champion again. She's obsessed with it. I respect that about Britt. She punched the ticket. The match is set. I know everything that's coming. I know what to expect. I know these three wrestlers better than they know themselves. I think I have that advantage more than anybody. She has got a big target on her right now against three extremely capable women that are all former world champions. There's no crack in Hikaru Shida. I have so many things want to do with this title. I can't lose this at Wembley. Shida can't get through a match without her kendo stick. So no, Shida, you are not ready to face me for the very first time. I have my two friends out there. Everything is gonna go according to plan. I can't think of anything I want more than to hold that title up high in front of 80,000 plus people. Still AEW Uman's world champion. Wembley Stadium, it's where champions are crowned. We've already seen new Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions crowned. Will we see a new AEW Women's World Champion crowned tonight all in London and joining us here for the second half of Zero Hour, none other than the Hall of Fame voice of professional wrestling, good old JR, Jim Ross. We got a legend in the house here. JR, what's up, kiddo? <laughs> JR, he's feeling it. These fans here in Wembley Stadium, they're still, they're feeling it, they're still filing in. Yeah. More than 80,000 fans joining us from 70 countries around the world, all converging on London the home of professional wrestling here tonight. Hello, boys. This contest is scheduled for one fall, and it's for the FTW Championship. Introducing the challenger from St. Mark's Place, weighing 201 pounds, he is JR, you couldn't have picked a better time to join us here tonight. You've come out for a dandy. I am ready. This is going to be a good one. You're right, two young guys. Biggest match of their life. Who's going to handle the pressure? Who's going to make the right moves at the right time? FTW rules for the FTW title. I want to say the FTW championship has never been defended outside of the U.S. And it's a first time for everything, and it's right here in London. But it's got to put a pit in your stomach. 
to have Jack Perry walking into London as FTW champion, Taz. Oh, it pisses me off. I hope that the guy that just got in the ring, the cold-hearted, handsome devil, I hope he takes that <laughs> FTW title back to good old New York City, baby. I guess uh, Jack Perry's gonna arrive in style here. I didn't realize he's a car service guy. He's got a lot of money. He's a Hollywood guy. And, I mean, is is the Jack Perry that we're seeing now, is that the true Jack Perry that it's been all along, the, the, the spoiled brat, so to speak? Well, I, I think it's evident. And you know what they say, JR, people show you who they are, believe them, right? Exactly, man. Hey, we live in a society where uh, the so-called elite but to flaunt their eliteness. And Jack Perry is from Hollywood royalty. Oh, Hook? <laughs> yeah, I got a feeling that Jack thinks he's gonna walk out and soak in these people. And his opponent, weighing 190 pounds, he is the FTW champion, Jack Perry. Hey, you know, guys, uh, some of the boys in the back are gonna make fun of old Jack for not coming in a stretch limo. That's one of those uh, diminutive limos, but it's a limo. It's got six doors, though. It's pretty big. He's going to have a visitor right about now. And Jack Perry on top of the limo. Hook striding confidently up the ramp. Hook has been simmering. He has been focused on oh, revenge. Oh, 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 oh. And Hook get things started. And the bell has rung the FTW Championship match. And look at the driver just bailing out. Yeah, he definitely did. We saw no collar, no bow tie up. That's traditional to start this matchup between two of the most highly rated young guys in all of pro wrestling. It was last month, blood and guts in Ooh. Boston. Jack Perry defeated Hook, the only loss of Hook's career to become FTW champion. And Hook, oh, <laughs> sends Jack into the door of the limousine. Jump back, Jack. And I'll tell you what, this back's got to be killing him after that. And again, this is all legal. It's FTW rules, so Anything it doesn't goes. matter. Anything goes, yeah. As Jack and Hook now fighting on top of the limo. Both men, this is this is tough territory for them to be in, JR. Yeah, that it is. It's very slick up there. Hey, well, yeah, and you know one thing, another thing is the referee know. can't make any bad calls. Oh, no, no, no! Oh, oh, oh. oh the suplex right on the top of this car. High and tight throw. Uh, Almost a brain buster. It was. Jack Perry began the year 2023 saying his goal was to become a singles champion. As we take another look at this, Hook, his spine punished on the top of that limousine. Take a look. I think Jack's got something in mind. If you go back live, he's got, he, Hook's not moving on that hood. As Jack Perry, oh wait, he's channeling his inner uh, RVD here. Yeah, Rob Van Dam, the man that, championship against now the cover one two and oh, kick out shows a lot of toughness to be able to kick out of that predicament i'll tell you that well that's a that's it's a giant engine underneath that car under that hood obviously let's take a look at this rolling thunder here mocking right at the page of raw van damme jack you know, this is right launching here? and then crushing real the, glass crushing the Go abdomen cry me a river of hook and now Jack Perry with designs to send Hook crashing through the windshield. Or maybe Hook. Man. So quick here. Gonna turn things around, Hook. Uh oh, 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 God! This is so dangerous. Oh, oh. So, so dangerous. <laughs> Slamming a guy into the windshield. The no. cover two and oh, Jack able to kick out. And it's flattered. <laughs> it didn't shatter. Thank God, but it's not over yet. Damn, bring a little New York City right here to London. Look at this, the Fisherman Look Buster. Oh, you can hear it. Yeah, that was Jack Perry's upper and lower back. That was his spine, that breaking, his spine breaking glass is what it was. And the match continues, which is what it is. Lacerated on the left arm. Expectedly so after being hooked into that windshield. Catching rapid punches to the back of the head. That weakens someone, you punch him in the back of the head. Oh, but as a perfect shot, that by Jack was almost going to the same direction. And Jack oh! Hook at 
ringside now, the spine of Hook. The ring Ribbon. post ain't gonna sell. Excalibur, it's not gonna sell. It's not gonna capitulate, nothing. And, oh no, no. The, the ankles of Hook on the barricade. Jack, they get draping DDT. And that's gonna be, it's gonna be a miracle if this young kid could kick out of, or get back in the game after that. He's trying to get back the FTW title. That was his, is Hook. Jack Perry just dropped Hook hard on his head. He can go for a cup on the outside. It is false count anywhere. I mentioned Jack Perry's ambitions at the start of the year. He said he was going to hold a singles championship in AEW. He was repelled by MJF, the four-way match, a double or nothing. Then by Sonata for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship at Forbidden Door. And it was the unexpected betrayal that led to Jack Perry being crowned FTW champion. As there you see at the bottom of your screen, we're just over 20 minutes away. Now just under 20 minutes away, all in London, live at the top of the hour on Bleed for Report. You got time, folks. Bottom line, you got time. Don't miss this pay-per-view. Make the investment is something you're going to talk about for years. It's Jack Perry sandwiching the uh, trash can into the face. Is Jack Perry going to go coast to coast? Yeah, he might be thinking that. Trying to channel Rob Van Dam once again. Non-stop flight. Can he take off? Can he do it? Jack, no, he doesn't. Took it away from him. I'm kind of glad he did. Just disrespect. Looks about, yeah, I, I think he's out, man, from that DDT on the floor. I think, I think he might be right, Taz. He's not moving well. He's not been moving well since that DDT on the floor as Jack Perry standing high. All in London. Oh, these two kids are in great shape to the pillars that the AEW is going to be built upon in a years ago. German suplex, two hands. But they revert back to basic fundamentals more often than not, and yeah. I love that. Yeah, these Germans, they definitely will take it out of you. Got to pop it up. There you go. Yeah, you don't have to reinvent the wheel offensively to get something a cute name, for God's sakes. And Taz, though, I'm not sure Jack Perry wants to get in a prolonged suplex exchange with Hook. No, it's definitely not a smart idea. For him to oh, for so the guy saw that. Oh man, that's a, that time, but oh, rough kick connects, ringing out through Wembley Stadium, swinging a miss there by Jack Perry. And now uh -oh, hook. Uh oh, German suplex, high bridge, and no, nice high bridge, just not quite enough. So tough, that's a good looking suplex. It was after the offense put on him. It's tough for you again. The handfall attempt. I've said it a lot. Germans take a lot out of the guy taking and the guy giving it. You're landing on your head in that bridge. Hook's keeping his clasp. He's trying to pull Jack off that top rope. Yeah, but Jack. Oh, Jack, Jack for the low shot. blow. Jack for the low blow. He's got a caught here in this capture. Oh, 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 Jack's head hit before anything else, I think. Jack Perry's head Jack to the canvas. Here got him. And a Jack Perry. I thought he was cooked, but. Hey, me too. He was able to kick out. You get a great look at the fans. Joining us here at Wembley Stadium, all in one, and they're still filing in. Uh, I'd like to see another look if we can sometime. I, I think that this kid's head and neck were just oh, jammed. It, Hook was, he was signaling that he was going to go for those cross, cross faces. faces. yeah. But Jack Perry used it as an opportunity to gouge the eyes. Remember, it's legal here. FTW oh. rules. Tiger Driver, center of the ring, two and oh, very, very close. Very physical matchup. Big time. These guys hate each other. Jack. Lock attention. I don't think Hook has been right since that DDT on the floor. You see him clutching the top of his head. Definitely could be the brain buster that was on that limo, too. That could have been it, too. And this crowd, so emotional. They're going to be so into the are so far into everything. Jack Perry driving that trash can into the midsection of the cold-hearted, handsome double hook. I'm not big of these uh, matches like this at times because it takes away from the ability to wrestle and these two kids know how to wrestle they do we've seen that obviously but it, again it's part of these ftw rules which i'm guilty of creating many years ago <laughs> oh what is going to happen maybe he's thinking i don't know if he's thinking moonsault or what carry nobody home oh the lariat turning jack inside out the neighbors move there's nobody home is right and hook with the trash can aloft and crashing down on the skull of Jack Perry. He's rocking some new gear, too. That's right. That scrambled the brains. 
Clockwork Orange inspired attire tonight by Hook. How fitting here in London as the cross faces rain down. And Hook, down and Hook's in. Red Rum. Red Rum is locked in. She's going to tap. He's got that Red Rum locked in. And Jack, Jack trying to get to the bottom rope. That's his only salvation right now. No, no, no salvation. Oh, 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 Harry Tap. Tonight, all in London Zero Hour. Taz, you can stop smiling. And I, I'm so happy <laughs> for Hook that he captured, regained, got back the title. That means so much to him and so much to our family. I'm so proud of him. I really am. And, and, and it's such a monumental event in a number. A stadium like this, JR, you've been part of so many massive events in your career. This is insane. 80,000 people just watched that. Yeah, you're right, Taz. So congratulations to your son with a very impressive victory. Uh, does that mean you're going to buy me a pint later? <laughs> I'll definitely buy you a pint. Maybe not Excalibur, because I could go broke. <laughs> Look, his legs are hollow. Victorious tonight for the FTW Championship. But that's not the only championship on the line. Kicking off our broadcast tonight. All in London, it will be CM Punk putting what he calls the real world championship on the line against his longtime bitter rival, Samoa Joe. The relationship between me and CM Punk, it's always been complex outside the ring. We've been there for each other in our toughest times. At the same time, we've both caused some of the roughest incidents that we've had in our life. Joe was a guy that brought the best out of me. If there's one thing that I'll never do is forget who Samoa Joe is. We've always been competitors, and that's how it always will be. The job is to beat me, not to survive me. No, they don't sleep. They live their lives in the shadow. Fading I lived for 20 years knowing that I couldn't see Joe. He never was better than me a day in his life. sits well with Samoa Joe. I think to have some kind of an identity crisis is really scary, and I think that that can make a scary man even scarier. Joe is hell-bent to not just beat Punk, destroy him. It wasn't him conquering me in that ring. It was him escaping me. Did I win because along the way I learned something to beat you, or along the way did you lose something? I want to pick a fight in London, England, and damn it, you will give me what I want. I accept, bitch. I'm going to hand you the ass whipping you so desperately need. I've never said no to a fight. Does this match mean everything to me? Yes, because it's about everything you've done. Every time I wrestle you, I leave pieces of myself in the ring. And it's hard to put the pieces back together afterwards. I take from you, Punk, which some say you don't deserve to have in the first place. I will be the king of AEW. I don't necessarily think that either of us are going to be the same after this. The Real World Championship match, CM Punk Samoa Joe will be kicking off our broadcast in just over 10 minutes. And joining us here at the desk, a man that knows both competitors very well, our own Nigel McGuinness. Lads, and you believe this? Can you feel the energy here in Wembley Stadium? Over 80,000 fans, the biggest event in British pro wrestling history. As I say, the locker room next caliber. Thanks to the house, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome well, home, Nigel McGinnis. Welcome to ringside. Welcome to All In. We are just a few moments away. You still have a chance to join us. Bleacher Report, pay-per-view. Select Dave & Buster's Tom's Watch Bar locations. 
internationally on Fight TV, DAZONE, YouTube.com, PPV.com, Sky Italia. So many ways to join us. You do not want to miss a moment. And let's go back to the remarkable Renee Paquette and the rest of our panel. Remarkable. What an incredible night that is ahead of us. I mean, already to have two incredible matches, new champion, new FTW champion in Hook tonight, new Ring of Honor tag team champions and MJF and Adam Cole. But we got to talk about Samoa Joe and CM Punk here, the real world champion. Um, obviously a ton of history between these two men over two decades, this rivalry has spanned since their days of Ring of Honor. Um, who has more to lose here tonight? I don't know if either one of them have anything to lose per se, other than, you know, Phil might have a chance to lose that championship. Mm -hmm. But really it comes down to these guys just, they're grinding. You know, it's that, that constant battle and competitive of coming up with somebody, the same mud they both chewed. You know, now it's gotten to this point where there's something on the line for real. Kip, what's your take? We were talking about it earlier about the gritty side of pro wrestling. And I feel like, again, this yeah. match is going to come down to who's got more grit. Absolutely. It's going to be dirty. It's going to be down in the mud. Like, um, I couldn't pick, to be honest. Uh, Paul, I'd like to pick. I can't ask you a question because sure. um, those two, um, CM Punk, Samoa Joe, they know each other inside and out. Right. They've been in that ring. They've knocked 10 bells out of each other over and over and over again. So when you're so experienced with somebody else, like, what's your mindset? How'd you go into that match? Yeah, well, in those kind of matches, because I've had to fight friends in the past mm -hmm. too, you got to compartmentalize. You shut down your personal feelings of whether you like the guy, whether you hate the guy. Focus on not making stupid mistakes. Mm. Stupid mistakes in this type of competition can cost you a match. Stay focused, stay in the match. If you have an upper hand, keep that upper hand and don't let off the gas till you get a pinfall. There you go. Take that one. That's what you got to do. <laughs> uh, going back to MJF and Adam Cole, Kip, you and I have been able to talk about it a little bit earlier. You guys were taking care of some business a little bit. Uh, and boy, did we. <laughs> boy, did we. <laughs> boy, hey, you know what? Yeah. You're kind of heavy. I should have jumped on your back and had you carry me. <laughs> Good gracious. <laughs> now that we've seen MJF and Adam Cole securing those Ring of Honor tag titles in tonight's main event for the AEW World Championship, how is this going to shake out? We keep questioning the friendship between these two, but here we are with the most coveted prize in all of this sport on the line on the biggest stage at Wembley Stadium. I mean, somebody's got to pull the move here. Well, we know. I, here's my gut opinion. You know, and I'm a huge fan. I'll go on the record and say this. I am a huge fan of MJF. I love what MJF does in the ring. Uh, his promos are angry, unique in your face, no apologies. He's called himself the devil. And I believe tonight, if he's gonna succeed over Adam Cole, the devil will have to make an appearance. Fair enough, can't argue that one. Uh, the this, this stadium stampede as well as another, well, we can get into that, but before we get into everything else that is happening here tonight on All In, let's just take a look at the entire card, top to bottom, to see what we are getting. Tonight is unbelievable history being made. Our main event is the AEW World Champion, MJF, battling his best friend, Adam Cole, their second round of action here tonight with the AEW World Championship on the line. And the AEW World Tag Team titles are on the line in a rubber match. It is the trilogy for FTR versus the Young Bucks. This is about legacy. This is about championship gold. It is all culminating here at Wembley Stadium. And the real world champion CM Punk takes on Samoa Joe in a rivalry that has spanned the better part of two decades. This is two behemoths, two powerhouses of professional wrestling going to work tonight. The master of reinvention, the Ocho, Chris Jericho takes on one of the current best professional wrestlers in the world, hometown boy, soon to be a free agent, Will Ospreay. I cannot wait for that matchup tonight. Trios action, we've got the Golden Elite, Ibushi, Omega, and Hangman Adam Page. They go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Takeshita and the Bullet Club Gold, Jay White and Juice Robinson. And it's a four-way matchup for the AEW Women's Championship. The current champion, Hikaru Shida, puts her gold up for grabs on the big stage against Tony Storm, Britt Baker, and the UK's own, Soraya. The AEW World Trio's action. We're going to see the champs, the House of Black, take on the acclaimed. And they have conjured up badass Billy Gunn. He will be making an appearance here tonight 
in London at Wembley Stadium. And it's a coffin match. We've got Darby Allen and Sting taking on Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage. I cannot wait for this one as well because this one's going to be a dirty match. And the stadium stampede could not have a better backdrop than the historic Wembley Stadium. It's Blackpool Combat Club with Santana and Ortiz taking on the best friends, Orange Cassidy, Eddie Kingston, and Penta. All right, let's talk the stadium stampede a little bit more here because, we, you know, we mentioned the backdrop. We know that we've got 80,000-plus fans here for AEW filling the seats at Wembley Stadium. This is going to be chaotic, to say the least. I mean, that's an understatement. What do you guys expect for these guys to really dig deep to bring out the best or worst versions of each other tonight? This is going to be absolutely, Renee, the worst versions. This is going to be a bloody, chaotic mess. Mm -hmm. yeah. Th this is one of those situations where if you have a weak stomach, go make some popcorn, don't sit down and go watch. Go make a little tea. Go make a little tea. Have a, what do you call it, a, a scone? A cuppa? I don't oh, drink tea, believe it or not. You don't drink tea? Don't, everyone assumes, because I'm English, I drink tea. I don't like tea. Oh, wow. So oh. that's presumptuous to think that Sorry, you drink mate. tea. Sorry, yeah. mate. So I'll drink enough for the both of us. <laughs> <laughs> Cup of tea or a scone, yeah. Well, we jam. know the Stampede oh, like match is going to be violent, it's going to be brutal, it's going to be ugly. There's no love lost there. I want to talk about badass Billy Gunn. Okay, please do. I mean, you're a man. You know him very well. I've please known Billy chime Gunn in. for a long time, and House of Black has made a critical, and I mean critical, era in taking the happy daddy ass, who's happy just to do scissoring and smile and support Mass Caster and Anthony Bowens. Now you have fired up badass Billy Gunn. Mm -hmm. They have opened a can that I don't think House of Black has enough to close. I'm just gonna let you know. You've got a six foot six, 275 pound, one of the best athletes in professional mm -hmm. wrestling, who's a veteran who's also pissed off. <laughs> I'm sorry, but th there's not a lot of wins. You'd be better off trying to fight a Bengal tiger in a phone booth right now <laughs> than to step in with Billy, badass Billy Gunn. <laughs> Let's talk Will Ospreay and Chris Jericho. I mean, you talk about Chris Jericho as being one of the greatest of He's all time. I think that that's He's... very undeniable. Absolutely. And then we've got Will Ospreay, one of the best current wrestlers today, continually making a name for himself, having these incredible five-star matches, if you will. But tonight feels like there's a lot of pressure for Will Ospreay to come out and really let people know on this massive stage exactly who he is while he is has free agency kind of looming in the future for him. Well, you had a key point there, Renee. You said massive stage. This is 80,000 people. This is not currently in Will Ospreay's wheelhouse as, as a fallback to. Mm -hmm. Not saying that it won't be in the future. Not saying with a guy of his caliber of talent, he's going to be competing in many crowds of this size in his future career. The guy's got talent. But he's in there with the Ocho. He's in there with the GOAT. Chris Jericho, who has done so many things in our industry in so many different territories, Chris is going to be calm, cool, and collected and waiting for Osprey to get rattled and make a mistake. But here's the thing with Osprey, though. I feel like we're always having this. The thing with Osprey, though, is throughout his entire career, I've known him since we were young, oh, young, young teenagers wrestling in his backyard. Since day one, everyone has always said, Will Ospreay cannot do this. Will Ospreay will not do this. He can't do that. He can't do that. And every single time on each stage, he has succeeded. That's, that's true. But he's in there with a guy that people have said the same thing oh, about I Chris agree. Jericho. 100%. 100%. Chris Jericho's too small. Chris Jericho this. Chris Jericho that. Agreed. Chris Jericho took it sideways and stuffed it up everybody's nose. Mm -hmm. So if you really look at the success of Will Ospreay in his younger career, and you look at the Lionheart and all the characters and all the Ocho, there's a lot of similarity in these two. Sure. That's why I'm so excited that for this match. same hunger and passion. The there's, there's a lot there that you put together. It really and is. We do have to bring up Don Callis, though, because he <laughs> could be... Do we have to? <laughs> I really? do think that we have to bring I up Don I thought we Callis. had a choice to, like, omit certain things, like <laughs> Don Callis... You didn't get that signed X. off on your contract we before you got up there. We were trying to avoid it. I was. Uh, there's a lot going on there. I mean, with Chris Jericho kind of ditching the Jericho Appreciation Society, joining the Don Callis family to, to where they're at now. I mean, how do you see Don Callis being a factor tonight? He's going to be a factor. I want to circle back to Will Ospreay one more time quickly. Like, sure. You mentioned one very good word when you, when you talked about him. You said pressure, right? Pressure. Diamonds are formed under pressure. Will Ospreay is a diamond. Uh, back to Don Callis. Um, Don, uh, Don Callis is a pile of poo. <laughs> 
and, and you don't get diamonds out of a pile of poop. You, you don't, you Even do if it wears diamond shoes. All right, guys, real quick, before we get into AEW All In, we are about to go live on pay-per-view. What match are you most excited to see tonight? I mean, we've rattled off this card. It's incredible. Real quick. Women's Championship and the Men's Championship. MJF, Adam Cole, and the Fatal 4-Way. The, the 4-Way with the women. Tip. Women's Championship. Soraya took me to go see Ed Sheeran years and years and years ago. She's going to win. The real world championship, CM Punk versus Samoa Joe, Wembley Stadium. Oh my goodness, it's gonna <laughs> go off. We are so excited. We are moments away from going live on pay-per-view. This historic night for all elite wrestling, a historic night for professional wrestling. We are so excited to be here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Welcome to AEW All In London Wembley Stadium. <laughs> 